So we get a lot of questions about Oncotype DX. What is it? How does it work? What does it tell us? And it's important in answering that question to understand that breast cancer is not a single disease. Breast cancer is a large, complicated family of diseases. And within that family, you have breast cancers that respond almost exclusively to blocking estrogen. And in those breast cancers, blocking estrogen is our best weapon. And you have breast cancers that respond to cytotoxic chemotherapy or immunotherapy, drugs like trastuzumab. And so within the subset of estrogen receptor positive, HER2 negative breast cancers, both node negative and node positive, we use Oncotype DX to determine the prognosis and to predict response to therapy. So that this tells us whether a patient needs chemotherapy. Well, if a patient will benefit from chemotherapy or will get all of her benefit from blocking estrogen. This is really historically important. In the 1990s through the early 2000s, every woman with a breast cancer greater than one centimeter in maximum diameter got chemotherapy big tumors, small tumors, node negative, node positive. And that was based on randomized trials that showed a benefit to chemotherapy, but it was a small benefit. So back in those days, we were treating, for example, 100 women to help six or 100 women to help eight. We didn't know who the eight were, so we treated everyone. Oncotype lets us personalize our approach. It lets us be far more precise in administering treatment to women with breast cancer. Taylor X is a landmark trial, and in fact, it is the largest randomized drug trial ever in the history of human breast cancer. And Taylor X had three important groups. Based on an Oncotype DX score, there was a designated low risk group, and these were patients with a score of less than or equal to 11. And early on, we saw in the first Taylor X report that the low risk group with no chemotherapy, with just blocking estrogen, had a 97% five-year disease-free survival. One of the most incredibly favorable results we've ever seen from a trial. At the high end, the third group in the trial, with patients with a high recurrence score, received cytotoxic chemotherapy in addition to estrogen blockade. Then the interesting group were those patients with an intermediate score in the middle. And those patients were randomized to receive estrogen blocking alone or estrogen blockade plus chemotherapy. And what we saw was that for patients across the board with a score less than or equal to 25, that all of the benefit was from blocking estrogen, that those patients did not benefit from chemotherapy. Now, there's a subtlety. <laughs> for patients below the age of 50 who had scores in the 17, 18, 19, 20, up to 23 to 24 range, there was actually a small benefit uh, from chemotherapy ranging from one to 6%, depending on the Oncotype score. But what does this mean? So we are tailoring the treatment. We are selecting the treatment that matches the disease and the patient in front of us but we are also decreasing the use of cytotoxic chemotherapy, and that's incredibly important. In terms of patient impact, patients with estrogen receptor positive, HER2 negative breast cancer, make up about 60% of, of all breast cancers in the Western world. And based on Taylor X, we know that about 60% of patients had that low score. And so you're eliminating uh, cytotoxic chemotherapy in a very large subset of patients who simply would be subjected to the risks, the potentially life-threatening side effects, the adverse events with no benefit. So this impacts lives. This is real.